This is Twit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, and as always on a Sunday at this time, it's time for our photo guy, Chris Marquardt. I have the wrong button here. Let me get your name up. Chris Marquardt, Chris Marquardt is the host of the Tips from the Top Floor podcast. He's a great photographer and leads wonderful photographic workshops, which you'll find at discoverthetopfloor.com, and joins us every week to help us be better photographers, even if we don't have fancy equipment. They call it gas. <laughs> and I have gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. Gear acquisition syndrome. What I, is it now? What What's going well, on I now? I just think that every time I buy a new camera, I will be a better photographer and or a new lens, and it never does it. Hey, come on. This, I, I have to say, the, as much as I've talked about, hey, you don't need that stuff, there are reasons for buying something. And very often, some, some of photography you won't be able to do without some special gear. So... Well, my wife has gas I mean, now. <laughs> what, what does she want? <laughs> well, she, as you know, uh, when we went on our vacation, I brought my Canon 5D Mark II, Mark IV, which is a very oh, fancy did, camera, which you had told me to buy, so I bought it. I'm blaming did that you. Did something? <laughs> <laughs> so she, she, she didn't want to bring such a heavy camera, so she has, and I bought it for her right before we left, the Olympus OMD uh, EM1. Uh, Mark cool II, camera. which is a beautiful lightweight. It's a micro four thirds camera, which um, makes it much lighter. It's mirrorless, uh, simpler, but it is very high tech and the quality has gotten very, very good. In fact, my good friend Scott Bourne, who is one of my favorite wildlife photographers uh, and a very good professional photographer, was recently told by his doctor, if you keep carrying your he this heavy gear around, your back's going to go. Hmm. So he switched to the Olympus. And he's now an Olympus ambassador. He takes amazing images with this very lightweight camera. So Lisa saw that and said, well, I need better lenses. And so now we're looking at $1,000 lenses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it, it, yeah, it can happen. It, can it happen. does happen. Oh. Yeah. No, it doesn't have to. But then is she, as long as she's not trying to take the 5D from you, I think you're safe. I know. That's the deal, right? And I can't complain because I've spent a little money on lenses myself. But it just shows you. <laughs> Gas can spread from husband to wife. Just, well, just so I, you think, know. I think I think your your journey uh, to the Galapagos has probably triggered a bit it there did. too, right? It did exactly. We had so much fun, and we, we this is the, this is it. We want to do more. So yeah, I didn't mind to hijack your segment. We can talk about anything you want. Oh, no worries. I I want to talk about some some kind of photography that is going uh, to be uh, coming up in about six weeks. The solar eclipse. Ooh. And the reason I want to bring this up now is because people want to maybe want to practice a bit, want to rehearse a few of the mo emotions, and maybe get some uh, some additional equipment for that. And so I want to just run everyone through how to do this, what what to look out for when shooting a solar eclipse. First of all, be very careful, protect your eyes because uh, you that's, don't want to point a, a camera <laughs> at the solar eclipse. I have a list in front of me. It says never look into the sun. Number one. Right on the top. It's the number one thing. Even if it's a partial eclipse, even if 95% of the sun is covered, it means still means the remaining 5% are dangerous. Yeah, There's can, only can... one time during a solar eclipse where you can take your protective uh, solar eclipse glasses off and that is during a full eclipse when the corona is out yeah but you have to wait for that to happen you so, have to be very very might, careful yeah it's not a that might be just a few seconds or yeah. or, 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 or a minute so right. it's relatively short so so, so john eclipse john glasses. my studio manager is going to oregon to see it he has his american eclipse well, actually quite a few american eclipse glasses and yep. you, you can get these uh and they they basically have welders glass in them that's so strong is there, is there actual glass in there i, well, I used these are to plastic. have those that have like like a fo like a foil a gel kind yeah, of yeah and you remember in the old days we talked about folding uh uh un was it exposed it was exposed negative yeah. film over and over and over mm -hmm. here's john with his piece of welding glass the last or a friend of his last time which was 1979 <laughs> so we oh, have wow. this total eclipse total solar eclipse the path is going right through the united states which is marvelous yep Starts starts up in let me see, um, Oregon, does it start in Oregon yeah. and then goes diagonally through the U.S. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you will need a filter on your lens on your camera if you want to shoot the solar eclipse with your camera. 
And uh, to get one of those, there are astronomy websites that sell those. And uh, even even at, at bigger stores like B&H, you will be able to get them. Um, they come as screw-on filters and then as foil-based filters that you just stick on. And those will uh, typically work just fine. You will also need a long focal length if you want a sun uh, if you want the sun at any decent size in your photo. So for, for a crop camera, we're talking 800 to 1,000 millimeters, maybe more. Uh, on a full frame, <clears throat> that will be around 14 to 1,500 millimeters. So there is a chance if you have a long lens and it's not quite long enough to maybe use an extender, something to increase the focal length of that. I should mention everybody in the U.S. will get some eclipse, but not everybody will get totality. So, yeah, totality is only in a few in a few specific places in a few states. And this is August and 21st. It starts uh, August 21st. Yeah, yep. 10 and then in the morning uh, Pacific time, and it, it continues. <laughs> I'm sorry, 9:08 Pacific time continues through 10:16 uh, right. Pacific time. So actually ends at two. Four, I'm looking at the NASA uh, site. It ends at, in Charleston, South Carolina, at 2:48 p.m. Eastern. So it's going to be mm -hmm. a big deal. I mean, uh, everywhere you go, you'll be able to see some. And Eclipse. if you want to take the photos, you have to practice that. You have to test this. And you can test during the regular sunshine, just normal sunshine. Uh, use a low ISO, put that filter on, uh, set it to an f-stop around, I don't know, somewhere around f8 to 11. And then try the different shutter speeds, a thousand, the 500, the 100, and so on. And then compare those on a computer and make a note of the one that works really well. And if the sun, if the eclipse is start, starts to come in, if the sun is partially covered, you will still need that same shutter speed because the part that is not covered is still exactly the same brightness as before. So you will not have to adapt the exposure in that case. And then if in doubt, your camera has something called bracketing where you can shoot several exposures um, right um, like like with a one or two or three stop difference between the different exposures, so you can take a dark, a medium, and a bright photo. So if in doubt, if you're not quite sure, use that. And I would suggest use the live view on your camera, on the back of your camera, to manually focus that. Oh, and okay. You might you might think that focusing on if infinity is going to help you here, but your lens is infinity when you when you turn it all the way to. Uh, to the side of infinity is typically not infinity. So oh. you want to use live view. The cameras, the lenses of today's autofocus camera tend to focus over infinity, which wow. is Wow, I did weird, assume but that's what happens, that yeah. if you shot it at infinity, that would be fine. So you, you are, no. you're going to pull it in a little from infinity. You want to check on live view and in, in live view, you can actually zoom in, digitally zoom in, and then it's pretty easy to find the right but spot. make sure you got that now, filter and the right lens. Oh, this is complicated. <laughs> yeah. Now, when the corona comes, when the corona, that's just the outer ring of the sun, when the moon is right in the middle, that's when you can take the filters off or you should take the filters off for a few seconds or a minute. And because that is much darker than the actual sun, and then you can view that with your bare eyes, but make sure to put that, uh, these glasses back on and rehearse those steps. Make sure you have this down. you got to practice, but how do you practice? What do you practice on? <laughs> a light bulb? Well, <laughs> you can at least practice on the sun itself. The, 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 the bare sun is definitely a good thing to as practice on. As long as on. you have that filter, please protect your eyes. That filter yeah. for your eyes, that filter for your camera, and then rehearse. Because if you really want to get this, the next uh, eclipse, the next full eclipse in the United States is going to be in 2024, in seven years. Wow. So there's a bit of... A bit of time for more practice then. <laughs> we took a cruise to Australia, the last uh, total eclipse um, some years ago. And I wasn't, I, you know, I wish I'd heard your, this piece before then. I wasn't very good at taking pictures of it, but it is a marvelous experience. You'll find Chris Marquardt at discoverthetopfloor.com. We'll probably talk some more about this before August. This is exciting. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Thanks, Chris. Sure.